Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews! Hello everyone and welcome to Frogmaster's vlog for the Warhammer for the Rising gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to this audio drama review. This is number 9 in a series of audio drama reviews. And uh, today I'm gonna be reviewing the, the audio drama called Thief of Reven Revelation written by Graham McNeil. Uh, just as this our drama is, uh, um, <coughs> is about the Father and Sons, I thought it would be suitable as this is the number 9, which is the holy number of Sench, which would then be a bit suit suitable and a bit a homage to that god of change, to see, so I'm a bit superstitious that way. Uh, let's move into detail and check out what this uh, story is all about. Uh, the Thousand Sons and Space Wolves, two legions whose destinies are were two legions who destinies were irre irrevocable blah, something entwined at Prospero, and yet who now dance separately to fate's tunes. As sanctioned ex executioners, the Wolf of Fenris were meant to root out treachery at the heart of the legions. But would they be cap capable of carrying out death sentence upon one of the Emperor's own sons? Meanwhile, Asik, Araman and Minus the Red cast their sight over the galaxy, seeking any clues as to what the future might hold. Uh, about this project, two Horace Heresy audio dramas by Graham McNeil and Guy Haley. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is what the part one of this duology, where the first one is Chief Thief of Revelation and the second one is Hunter's Moon. Uh, I have yet to listen to Hunter's Moon, but uh, but uh, I will uh, get on to that later on. So I, I, I believe this will serve as a duology between the uh, Fossil Sons and Space Wolves, just like the audio drama The Dark King and Light Tower work together, and the uh, other audio dramas Burden of Duty and Grey Angel was a duology they uh, worked together. And the same as, all, as also with A Thousand Sons and Prosper Burns. Uh, if you want to know more about those, I would recommend you to go back and check out those reviews which I did, uh, did previously on this vlog. Uh, first, I want to talk about the actual cover for, uh, for Thief of Revelation. Uh, I really like the cover actually. It's simple and shows what we can truly expect from the audio. Uh, it has some cool visual effects and, and drawings. Uh, it will get 7 forks out of 10 from me. Uh, FIFA Revelation uh, takes place sometime after the A Thousand Suns ended. And we see the leftovers try trying to struggle on the planet of sorcerers. If you have read the short advent day number 8, Dust, then you know pretty much what is happening on the planet and what Araman is currently conducting in his researches. And, and even though that is considered a 40k story, I would now consider it a Horus Heresy one, mean being that it's a small retcon of sorts. Uh, he's collecting thousand sons who has fallen under the curse of the flesh change and you can listen to a short extract uh, how they managed to deal with that right now. You will fail because you think a flesh change is to be feared. You think it's a curse but you can't see it for the boon it is. Yeah, so slowly he realized that the curse is uh, only has death to offer them. Uh, so with the counsel and interruptions from some of his close associates and brothers, Araman decides that he wants to seek out the Primarch. Uh, so Araman travels to the Obsidian Tower where Magnus Red currently residues, where his whereabouts, and even though he doesn't want to be disturbed. Uh, even though this, Magnus allows him to enter in, into his close quarters. Inside there, Magnus forbids Araman from continuing his research about the common rubric spell, which we most of all should be, should, which we readers should be well aware about. If you're not sure about the rubric, I would recommend you to check out my fork theory number four, which I paired up in this corner. Uh, Erman then asks what is more important than saving his own legion. It is then we get to see in this audio that just like butcher's nails, 
was to betray her, meaning a foreshadow of a novel uh, to come pretty much. So it has been hinted in stories previously of this in Aurelian and Betrayer and in blog entries at Black Library that uh, there's a novel coming up which is called The Crimson King uh, which will de de uh, detail the choice of Magnus whether or not he wants to join Horus Rebellion or not. Uh, in this audio, then Mag Magnus shows that he's been traveling around the galaxy looking upon the conflicts that are pre currently being ravaged around the, in all the corners. Uh, for instance, the Framas Crusade in the battle between the Night Lords and the Dark Angels, the Battle of Cygnus Prime where the, uh, the Angel Sanguinius fell, and the sacking of Calf between the World Bearers and the Ultimates. Uh, Magnus, who is now an uh, energy entity, it sounds really cool and you can listen to a small extract right now. Don't speak his name! Father. Why do you disturb me? Uh, so, this story, uh, if, we, if we compare it to Butcher's Nails, which it's pretty much the same thing, it only sets up a scene after one major event. Uh, so it set up a scene after that and, and serves as a bridge between this old novel and this coming one. Uh, so where Butcher Snails serves as a bridge between the first heretic and betrayer, this serves as a bridge between A Thousand Sons and the Crimson King. Uh, and it doesn't add much, much to the whole everything that we didn't already know. Uh, but in a, in a way it's still essential to get a bigger picture of what we're dealing with here. Uh, the voice work is pretty much the same, very decent, but the effects are being really upped more and more for each audio that comes into the series. So I would say that they are getting better on that part at least, which is an improvement in a good way. You can listen to the different voices right now, if, uh, right here. You take too many risks delving into the flesh of the changed ones. I risk more by not delving. And did you learn anything of use from? But so even if the even though that the effects are cool and the voices works, the story is really lacking to say so. And it's a real shame that I really love the Graham's portrayal of the Thousand Sons and. I want to soak in everything about them, all the stories, all the lore, all the information and stuff like that. Uh, overall it doesn't add too much, which we did already know from short stories and written work previously. So I will only give this audio drama uh, 5 forks out of 10 possible, just like I gave Butcher Snails. Uh, with that said, I, that's pretty much everything I had for this other drama in a review. I hope it has been interesting and useful for you to listen to. Uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe my videos. Please give a thumbs up. And also leave comments on things I'm doing good so we keep on doing them. And leave negativity, confuse I'm doing bad so we need to improve or remove the content entirely. And also don't forget to share this with your friends if you think they could need, need some yeah, look into the uh, into the horror heresy series and what to read, what you should read, and what you can avoid and stuff like that. But other than that, thank you very much for watching this. All is dust. Bye.